Hello guys, welcome to physics grad. This is day 3 of daily quantum mechanics and today we are going to see some examples of vector spaces whose elements are not arrows that you are already familiar with. So let us begin. So in this video we are going to see two examples <coughs> and they are the case of 2 cross 2 matrices which is this and all functions which are defined in the interval 0 to L. So when I say all function any possible functions that you can think of all of those functions set of all of those functions but only defined in the interval 0 to L. Okay, So these are the two uh, examples that we are going to see in this video. So before we continue here is the definition of a vector space and if you want to recall just pause the video and go through these slides. So this is the definition and these are the features of a vector space. So uh, this is the first slide and these are the continuation of the features and these are the results that are implied by the features and this is where we stopped in uh, day 2 yesterday. So let us begin with the first example and in this example we consider a set of all 2 cross 2 matrices whose elements are a, b, c, d for all a, b, c, d belongs to real numbers. Okay, And let us call this set as M. Now as I have said uh, in the previous video as well if we want to check whether it is a vector space or not the first thing that we need to do is to define the rules for adding two elements of the set and the rule for multiplying a scalar with the particular element of the set. So here if these two belong to the set M then the rule for addition is such that the every element gets added to the corresponding element in the second uh, in the second vector. So in this case it is a1 b1 c1 d1 and a2 b2 c2 d2. So when I add them this becomes a1 plus a2 b1 plus b2 c1 plus c2 d2 uh, d1 plus d2. And uh, multiplying by a scalar is basically multiplying all the four uh, elements of this matrix with the number alpha for alpha belongs to real. So this set is actually defined over a real field because all the scalars that are multiplied with these elements of the set have to be real in order for the uh, result to belong to the set M. So now the question is, is M a linear vector space? So to check whether M is a linear vector space or not, we will have to verify the properties of a linear vector space whether this set satisfies them or not. Now before we go there note that you cannot define a magnitude and a direction for a matrix because that simply does not make, make any sense. So therefore a 2 cross 2 matrix cannot be represented as an arrow. Okay. So this is the first example that we have come across wherein you cannot the elements of the set are not arrows. Okay. So therefore instead of thinking about them as arrows that is instead of thinking about vectors as arrows now we only think of them as elements of some set. Okay. That is the only thing that should come to your mind when I say the word vector. Okay. And arrows the set of all arrows in three dimensions for example they do form a vector space and therefore they are also vectors. But they are just one example of a vector. There are other examples like this in this uh, in this case we are looking at 2 cross 2 matrices. So as, as we verify whether these 2 cross 2 matrices form a vector space or not at the end it can be generalized to n cross m matrices as well. So therefore the important takeaway in these first few lectures is that you should not think of an arrow whenever I say the word vector. Okay, All you need to associate with the word vector is that they are some elements of a defined set. So in this case the defined set is M 
and the elements form a matrix okay and we are checking whether this set m is a linear vector space or not if it is a linear vector space then we can consider these matrices as vectors all right so we need to verify all the properties of the vector space in order to see if m is a vector space or not so let us do that so the first property that we will, that we will verify is to check whether they are closed under addition and scalar multiplication so if you take two elements of the set m and add them then what what you will get is another matrix whose all the four elements will again belong to a real number and therefore this matrix will also belong to the set m and therefore it is closed under vector addition similarly if you multiply with the real number alpha scalar multiplication according to the rule that we have defined then the numbers that result in these four uh, four places are again real numbers and provided alpha is real of course and therefore this matrix will also belong to the set m and therefore they are, it is also closed under scalar multiplication okay and since alpha is real that is any scalar that has to be multiplied with this particular matrix with a particular matrix has to be real in order for it to be closed under multiplication we say that m is defined over a real field all right so let us move on to see if the other properties are also satisfied so let us see if the rule for addition is distributive or not so this is the distributive property with respect to the vector <coughs> so if i write alpha times vector 1 plus vector 2 then this is alpha times vector 1 plus alpha times vector 2 and uh, this will be satisfied with our current rules for addition and scalar multiplication similarly distributive property with respect to the scalars again alpha plus beta times some vector will be alpha times the that vector plus beta times that vector this will also be satisfied with the current definitions for addition and multiplication now we check the associative property with respect to scalar multiplication what it means is that first we multiply beta with the vector then that then we multiply this resulting quantity with the scalar alpha then it will give the same result as multiplying the two scalars first and then multiplying that resulting scalar with the vector and this will also be satisfied with our definitions moving on we have to check whether addition is commutative or not so vector 1 added with vector 2 is same as vector 2 added with vector 1 and this will be satisfied with our rule for addition similarly we check for associative property with respect to addition wherein we add vector 2 and 3 first and then we add vector 1 to it it is say the result will be same as adding 1 and 2 first and then adding vector 3 so it is indeed associative with respect to addition so all that is left is to check whether there exists a null vector and whether there exists an additive inverse so yes the null vector exists and that is nothing but the matrix rules all elements are zeros and if i add such a vector to any vector uh, i mean so so far i've been calling these matrices as vectors but we have not yet proved them as vectors so i should have called them as elements okay elements of the set so if i add this element to any other element of the set i get back the same element so this is also satisfied uh, the property of a null vector is also satisfied and the null vector null vector exists and it will be unique by the proof that we have proved uh, earlier in day 2 and existence of additive inverse and if we have an element a b c d then its additive inverse will be minus a minus b minus c minus d which means that if you add the two you are going to get the null vector so so far it's good so therefore all the properties are satisfied and therefore we can say that m is indeed a linear vector space so in if you can generalize this uh, whatever we have discussed for a 2 cross 2 matrix for an n cross m matrix and you will see that set of all n cross m matrices will also form a vector space okay so that is the that was our example one on matrices let's go to example two now here i'm going to be very quick in going through the in verifying the properties because of the time constraints so let us do that quickly so consider a set f 
Now we consider set of all functions f of x defined in, defined in the interval 0 to L and we define the addition and scalar multiplication as f1 of x plus f2 of x is just pointwise addition which means that if f1 of x is x square, f2 of x is x cube then f1 of 2 plus f2 of 2 would be 2 cube plus uh, sorry 2 square plus 2 cube which would be 12. This is the rule for adding this and the rule for multiplying is again multiply the value at each point which is pointwise multiplication. So again in that example f1 time f1 of 3 times alpha is nothing but alpha times 3 square which is 9 alpha. So these are the rules that are defined for addition and scalar multiplication. Now all we need to do is see whether all the properties of a vector space are satisfied or not. Now I am not going to again discuss it in uh, great detail. I am just going to skim through the slides and you can verify it on your own. It is not that hard. So again, once again, elements f of x can't be represented as arrow because it doesn't make any sense to say that this function has this direction and this magnitude. So it's not an arrow clearly and so so this is another example of the case where vectors are not arrows. And then we go on to verify the properties. So it is indeed closed under addition and scalar multiplication because if you add them pointwise you will get another function defined in 0 to L therefore it belongs to M. Similarly if you multiply the result will also belong to M. Oh sorry not M this must be F my bad. Okay. So distributive property is also satisfied with respect to scalar and vectors. Associative property with respect to scalar is also satisfied. Commutative property with respect to addition is also satisfied. All of these you can verify very easily. Associative property with respect to addition is also satisfied. Null vector exists and that is nothing but the constant function with the value 0. So that if you add it to any function, you will get the same function back. And additive inverse of f of x will be just minus f of x. So that if you add them, you will get the null uh, or you know the null vector that we defined. So therefore, all the properties are satisfied. And therefore, f is also a real linear vector space because the uh, scalar that we are multiplying, if we assume it to be real and all the functions to be real, the functions have to be real so then it will be defined over a real field and therefore it will form a real vector space so now before we end let us just consider some special cases so what about the set of all functions that vanish at x equal to 0 and x equal to l so these if this is x equal to 0 and this is x equal to l then um, we are talking about all functions which are vanishing at exactly 0 and L, something like this, all of these functions. So if you consider all of these functions and do the same exercise again, you will indeed see that they will form a linear vector space. Similarly, if you have periodic functions such that the only constant is that f of 0 must be equal to f of L, this will also form a linear vector space. You can again check it from the properties. You can do it yourself. And similarly, if you have functions where f of 0 must always be phi, then clearly this will not be a vector space because if you have f1 of x plus f2 of x, then uh, the result at x equal to 0 will be 10 and therefore it will not belong to set of functions which who have f of 0 equal to 5 so therefore it will be not closed under addition so this will not be a vector space so with this you should be able to identify whether a given set is a vector space or not and more or less we have covered uh, the examples which we will encounter in quantum mechanics mainly matrices and uh, functions but we will encounter complex functions instead of real functions so thank you, I will see you on day 4, take care.